Hello, and thank you for joining me on my video series, Installing and Configuring IBM Domino 9 Social Edition <coughs> on CentOS 6. I'm covering both 64-bit and 32-bit installations. I am your host, Devin Olson, and this is Part 6, Domino Specific Configuration. Okay, at this point, what we've done up until now is, in all the preceding videos, we have gotten our CentOS um, 6 Linux installation um, set up and running. The, it's running on a virtual machine. It's a 64-bit installation. We've gotten uh, our base services have been started and configured. Our SE Linux has been disabled. Our firewall has been set up. We've installed... Um, certain um, specific uh, packages and utilities that we need. We've created our, our user account that we're going to use for Domino and we've, um, we've set up our SSH server. So um, we're pretty much ready to go and start doing the Domino configuration. One of the purposes of this video series is to demonstrate how crazy easy Linux can be if you just kind of relax and go with it and don't let it panic you. I mean, it's very, it's a very secure system, but it's also very, when, when it's done right, it, it's not difficult to do um, or, or to work with. And to that end, um, we're going to do our demonstration today um, doing the configuration of our Linux server um, entirely from my iPad. So I've mirrored my iPad to this screen here so we can record it um, and make it a little larger so um, we can actually get a nice full screen of what I'm going to be working with. Leave that right there. That looks about good. Okay, and what I'm going to use is on my iPad, I've got a, I've got a server auditor, auditor um, utility, which basically allows me to connect via SSH. It's a free one. It's pretty simple. Um, so I'm going to connect to my server. I've already created a connection for demolearningpages.com. I've set an IP address. That's an accessible IP address external to the to the iMac that the virtual machine is running on. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and connect um, with that. Now, I've got this set up to take my user ID and password automatically and put it in place. Let me do something really quickly, um, bring this out of the screen. I could also do it this way uh, by opening just a command console in my iMac. Um, or if you're using um, Windows, you could use a PuTTY tool to, to give yourself an SSH command uh, console window. But here's what it looks like if I'm going to SSH to this on an iMac. I would go uh, SSH and um, notes is the user ID at 10.0.0.21. That's the IP address. It comes in, it says, uh, it doesn't know who this is because it's the first time I'm connecting. I'm going to, yeah, I want to connect. So there's, now I need the password for notes. And if you recall, we used a really, really secure password of password. And now I'm signing to the machine as notes. Um, and it's exactly the same as here for my iPad um, signed in. So it's pretty much that simple. Let me and minimize that and let's go ahead and do the configuration on this um, to make sure it's going to work. Now the first thing I want to do is I need to change to the super user because my notes user doesn't have all of the rights that uh, I need in order to do some of these changing. So I'm going to change to the super user. I'm going to do that using the SU command for a super user and now it wants the password for the super user. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that password. And now I am the super user. And you notice there's a subtle difference in the, um, in, the, in, the, in the console here. For the notes user, it's notes at demo and a tilde and then dollar sign. But when I pass sign in as, as the root user, as the super user, you'll notice I've got the root at demo notes. That's who I was signed in as, but I'm root. And then there's a hashtag or a pound symbol. Um, the difference being that that's to visually remind me that I'm signed in as root whenever I'm in. So that's it. We're signed in. I've, I've, I'm accessing this server from a remote machine. Um, 
an iPad. You can use anything. Um, it's not that difficult. This is how you this is how you manage your servers from across the world, uh, particularly when you're on the beach or what have you. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to verify that the HTTP D service is stopped and disabled. This is a default service in Linux. I'm not even sure if these services have actually been installed, but they will interfere with the services uh, from our Domino server, and we don't want that interference. So I'm going to go and tell it a service uh, HTTP D stop, and it's it's unrecognized, so it's not installed. So if it was installed and it was running, then I, the, the next two commands I would enter would be check config httpd off to verify that it's off. I'm going to get a message here saying, hey, you're an idiot. This service isn't installed. And then I would, I would delete it using the check config httpd minus minus del. And again, I'm going to get this warning saying, stop telling me to do this stuff, you're a moron, because the service isn't there. So the next service I want to get rid of is the send mail service, because that's going to interfere in a big way with RSMTP. But I'm not quite sure if it's installed or not. Um, so we'll, we'll try the same command, service, uh, send mail, stop. And same thing, it's an unrecognized service, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I could also use the yum command to remove it, but again, it's going to say, you know, you're an idiot. This file isn't there. It doesn't know. So it's not a big deal. So now I want to check for the postfix service. This is another mail service installed by default on Linux installations. And this will also interfere with our SMTP service. And in fact, this will interfere so badly we won't even be able to bind to a port if it exists. So service postfix uh, stop. Oh, look at that. Postfix was there, even though I didn't install it. It showed up. So I've shut down Postfix. So now I need to make sure that it never starts when we boot the machine. So uh, check config. Postfix. Off. So there we go. Uh, now let's uh, tell it check config. Postfix. Minus minus del. This is going to delete the configuration file for Postfix. Okay, and now I want to remove Postfix from this machine entirely because I don't ever want it there because this is a Domino server. So yes. Oh, I forgot to put the minus y command uh, in. So now it's actually asking me, "Do you really want to remove this?" Yes, I want to remove it. Go away and, and never, never, never return. I don't want to see you anymore. So. All right, we've deleted that stuff, taken care of some things. Now what we need to do is we need to set the file handles. By default, there aren't enough file handles available to a user account um, for Domino server to use. The Domino server, when it's running, has to run under the context of the user ID. So it's going to run under the context of our notes user. Um, and that notes user, they're limited to the number of files that they may access at any one time. And we need to increase that limit so that notes will work properly. And so we're going to do this. We're going to enter the um, ulimit command, minus, oops, minus n, the number, and 20,000. So there we go. We've set that. Now what I want to do is I want to edit the configuration file um, for this. I'm going to use the v command as before. Uh, etc security limits.conf is the name of the file we're going to edit and here's the file that we're going to edit and what I want to do is I need to add uh, some information um, to this file so we're going to kind of scroll on down do, 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 do. and you'll see here we dart down here at the bottom uh, here's examples of stuff we, we would add. So what I want to do is add stuff for our um, notes user. So uh, once again, I need to go shift asterisk I to go into edit mode. And what I'm going to do here is the first, the first thing I need to put in is the name of the user. So if you recall, that's notes. 
and we're going to put in a soft setting and a number of files. Now, this is a 64-bit system, so I'm going to crank the number of files, 65,535. Yay! That's a huge number of files. 64 bits, no big deal, we can handle it. If this was a 32-bit system, I would say the maximum value here you would want would be 20,000. Uh, but because this is 64-bit, we're going to go with that. And then notes. Hard. The hard limit. Number of files. Oops. N-O-O-F-I-L-E. And again, um, 65,535. Two nice big numbers. Real happy with that. Um, okay, we hit our uh, escape key. Now we need to um, tell the system um, star a colon w q enter and uh, we've written this file and you know I could cat this to verify that the changes are in fact have in fact been made. And there we are, my changes are intact. So what I'm gonna do now at this point is I'm going to reboot the server and I can do that. Uh, there are two ways. I could either enter an sbin slash shutdown minus r now command or I could just enter the reboot now command. I'm gonna enter the reboot now command now. And boom, server is now rebooting and that's pretty darn cool. So let's go ahead and uh, we don't need this anymore. So there we go. And you'll notice here on the console, the server is now going down because we were logged in on this as well. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And um, there's the Linux server right there. And it's back up and operational, ready to go. Okay, so We've done that, it's been cool, it's been fun. We need to do some more stuff, but I wanna save that for another video because these videos are getting kinda of long. We've been talking up for almost 13 minutes on this one now. So we'll go ahead and end this video now. Um, we can come back and watch the next in the series. You can uh, read about XPages development at my website, uh, www.learningxpages.com. You can read my blog where I babble on incoherently about all kinds of silly stuff at devinolson.net or if you decide to go to www.notesin9.com my friend David Lee has all kinds of amazing videos on doing very cool stuff with notes. Uh, once again I thank you very much for joining me on this video series. My name is Devin Olson.